Hi students. Uh, today we are going to see uh, a technique of uh, converting the low analog filter into digital filter. And that is your bilinear transformation. So uh, we saw one more uh, technique already. Uh, that is your impulse invariant uh, technique. So the important characteristics while you are converting your analog filter, stable analog filter to a stable digital filter is you have to make sure that the left half of your S plane, the poles which lie in the left half of the S plane, should be mapped inside the unit circle of the Z plane. So, by keeping that part in the mind, we'll be going for the second technique, that is your uh, bilinear transformation. An impulse invariant technique, uh, the toughest part is after getting your H of phase, that is, after getting your H of phase from the problem, you have to fit into any one of the three statements here. And once you fit that H of S into any one of the three uh, statements, that is a one divided by S minus PI, or S plus A divided by S plus A whole square plus B square, or B divided by S plus A whole square plus B square, then getting your H of S Z is going to be very easy. By substituting the value in your formulas, you'll be able to make it up. In bilinear transformation, converting your H of S into H of Z is very easy. But after that, solving your H of Z is going to be a little bit tedious part. So this bilinear transformation, we'll see uh, how you can convert your uh, H of S into H of Z using this technique here. So this bilinear transformation technique is uh, conformal mapping that uh, transforms your imaginary axis of your S plane into unit circle, it is Z plane. So by, uh, by only once, so that you can avoid your analyzing effect of your frequency components. This in, impulse invariant technique is appropriate for low pass and band pass because their resonant frequencies are very low. But it is not suitable for your uh, high pass and band stop as your resonant frequencies are very high due to analyzing effect. But this can be overcome in your bilinear technique. So uh, I'll be taking a, a single order function h of s equal to b divided by s plus e. Now, this H of S can be written as Y of S divided by S of S, so that B divided by S plus C. I'll be getting your equation as um, cross multiplying it out. So, S into Y of S plus A into Y of S is equal to B into X of S. So, if I take your inverse Laplace transform, S into Y of S is nothing but your dy of T by dt, A into Y of T is equal to B into X of T. So, on, a, on integrating uh, between the uh, N, N, nt to n minus 1 of t. So n minus 1 of t to nt. Uh, I'll be integrating the nt. So uh, this can be written as integral minus n minus 1t to nt dy of t dt plus a into integral n minus 1t into nt y of t. rule for numerical integration. So what does that mean here is, so integral n minus 1t into nt, a of t dt is given by t by 2 into a of upper limit plus a of lower limit here. That is the function of your upper limit minus function of your lower limit. Suppose uh, if uh, same thing, the trapezoidal rule for numerical, numerical integration says that integral n minus 1 of t to n of t, dy of t dt is given by the function of upper limit minus the function of your lower limit here. So by applying these two in your equation, so just uh, I'll be uh, replacing here, just this equation, the fourth, fourth equation, this one. So in this dy of t, y of t and x of t in this part, the second equation will be applied for this one and the first part will be applied for uh, the, sorry, second, first equation will be applied for this one and second will be up, applied for these two things here. So, y of nt minus y of n minus 1t plus a, a t by 2 into y of nt plus y of n minus 1t plus b t by 2 x of nt plus x minus 1 of t. If I take your inverse uh, the transform, this will be of y of t. I'll be take, considering my uh, t here. So y of t minus z inverse y of t 
plus a by 80 by 2 into here it is y of z plus z power minus 1 into y of z and this one. So now I'll be finding my y of z divided by x of z. So y of z divided by x of z what happens? dt by 2 1 plus z inverse divided by 1 minus z inverse plus a t by 2 1 plus z inverse. So here I have your 1 plus z inverse in the numerator. So what I'll be trying to do is and t by t2 also I'll be having. So I'll be trying to cancel this one. So I've been taking t by 2 I take that one in this 1 minus z inverse in this uh, one I don't have anything here so what happens I'll be taking the compensation so t by 2 I took it out so I'll be giving the comp of first 2 by t and 1 plus z inverse I took so it will be of divided by 1 plus z inverse and here this t by 2 1 plus z inverse I took it out so the left out term is a here so now I can cancel this 1 plus z inverse and 1 plus z inverse and t by 2, t by 2. Now the left out term is b divided by 2 by t, 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse plus a. If I uh, equate your h of s with h of z, I can clearly say that if I convert where and all I have s, if I replace my s as 2 by t, 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse, I can convert my h of s into your h of z. Uh, you know, to find the relationship between your analog and digital filter, here I have this equation here. So make it in your positive part. S is S to 2, 1, 2 by t, z minus 1 divided by z plus 1. Here if I replace your S as sigma plus j omega and z as r e power j omega, I can get your relationship as omega is equal to 2 tan inverse of omega t by 2. Or uh, the um, analog omega can be written as 2 by t tan omega by 2. So why I have to do this one is since the mapping is going to be a non-linear, the lower frequency in analog domain will be getting expanded in digital domain, whereas higher frequencies are compressed. So to avoid this non-linearity of this arc tangent function, we'll be going for this frequency wrapping here. So now we'll solve the problem here. Convert the analog filter with the system function, h of s equal to 2 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 3 into a digital IIO filter using a bilinear transformation. So with t equal to 0.1 second. So here, the first, very first step itself, I'll be able to get my h of z. h of s is equal to 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2. So I'll be getting my h of z from your h of s if I replace my s as 2 by t, 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse. So where and all I have this uh, yes, I'll be replacing it by 2 by t, 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse. So in the first step itself, I got my h of z. But the thing is, you have to get your h of z uh, such that the denominator of your h of z, first term of your denominator should be 1. So I have to simplify this one. So simplification takes a larger, uh, larger much, uh, much uh, longer time here. So if you simplify it step by step, you'll be able to get the answers without any problem here. So now in this one, I'll be substituting my t value first. So t is equal to 0.1 sec that is given in the problem statement. Uh, if it is not given, you can take your t as 1. So t is equal to 1. I'll be replacing it 0.1. So 2, 2 by point, uh, 0.1 will be 20. So I'll be then what I'll be doing, I'll be taking your LCM for this uh, function and LCM for this function. So now what happens here is uh, I can take it out as uh, 20 1 minus z inverse plus 1 into 1 plus z inverse and I took the LCM for this one. Now denominators denominator will be numerator so by making that rule 1 plus z inverse into 1 plus z inverse that 1 plus z inverse whole square I'll be making it to a numerator so denominator is denominator will be numerator. Now, I, I, I'll try to remove this um, bracket and I'll be trying to remove this, this bracket in the next step. So 20 minus 20 z inverse plus 1 plus z inverse. Again, 20 minus 20 z inverse plus 3 plus z inverse. Right now, I'll be simplifying this one as 21 minus 19 z inverse. And here it is 23 minus 17 z inverse. Now multiply. The next step is to multiply your uh, um, equations here. So that I'll be able to get this one. So multiplying this denominator. I'll be able to get this equation here. Now, the main thing is that your denominator.
So now 2 divided by 483 will be uh, performed so that it's 0.0041 1 plus that inverse whole square divided by 1 minus 1.644 that inverse plus 0.669 that inverse that power minus 2. So as I take this 1 for 2, 483 commonly out, I'll be dividing each and every coefficient here. So that I'll be getting this one. So always in your uh, IIR filter, the denominator of your H of Z first to put down of the denominator should be 1 here, right? So this is your H of Z. So next, to convert the analog filter with the system function H of is equal to S plus 0.5 divided by S plus 0.5 whole square plus 16 into a digital IIR filter using a bilinear transformation. But here they have given the, the digital filter have a resonant frequency of 5 by 2. So we'll be going for the pre-wrapping here, right? So before that, uh, I can have the generalized form of your H of S S plus 0.5 divided by S plus 0.5 whole square plus your omega. So I'll be taking your analog omega C uh, cutoff frequency as 4. So uh, here, the sampling time period is going to be T, right? So uh, I'll be finding the time, time period T. So omega is equal to 2 by T tan omega by 2. So you have your analog omega as 4. They have given you digital omega as 5 by 2. Uh, um, calculate in a radian mode. So you can find this T value. So T can be obtained by 2 by omega C tan omega by 2. If you, sub, if you keep your calculator in your radian mode, the pi value should be of shift to pi. right? So uh, 1 by 2 tan pi by 4 will give you 0.5. So your t is equal to 0.5 second. So now replace your s as uh, 2 by t 1 minus that inverse divided by 1 plus that inverse. You'll be able to get your uh, h of z. So your h of s is s plus 0.5 divided by s plus 0.5 whole square plus 60. So 2 by t, t is going to be 0 0.5. So 2 by 0 0.5 is going to be 4. So replace it wherever I have s, I replace it by 4 into 1 minus that inverse divided by 1 plus that inverse. So here, normally what happens here is where the students will uh, make a mistake. No? They will keep this 4 as such here. They, they, that 4 has to be squared here. right? So they, they'll figure it out. Right? So instead of making it as 16, they'll be keeping it as 4. That is a, a place where the students always used to make a mistake. So I'll be taking your LCM for the numerator and your LCM for the denominator. So 4 into 1 minus that inverse plus 0.5 1 plus that inverse and then here for the whole one I'll be taking this whole square. Now I'll be cancelling this denominator and this left out term 1 term 1 plus that inverse is left out so I'll be taking into a numerator because denominator denominator will be numerator. So I'll be taking it out. Now I'll be simplifying the equations here. So I'll be trying to remove all my brackets here. So it's 4 minus 4 that inverse plus 0.5 plus 0.5 z inverse into 1 plus z inverse divided by 4 minus 4 z inverse plus 0.5 1 plus z inverse whole square. Right, so here and then I'll be trying it out. 4.5 minus 3.5 z power minus 1 whole square. So now a minus b whole square, a plus b whole square formula has been applied. And then I solve this one to get it up as 36.25 plus 0.5 z inverse plus 0.28 28.25 z power minus 2. So now, as I said earlier, in your IR filter, in the denominator of your H of Z, the first term should be 1. So I'll be taking your 36.25 commonly out. If I take your 36.25 commonly out, it will become 1. And 0.5 divided by 36.5 is 0 0.01, 1.3, 0 0.0138. 26, 28.25 divided by 36.25 is 0.7793 z power minus 2. And here, 1 divided by 36.5 is nothing but 0 0.027. So in the numerator, uh, you don't need to worry much about it. Only in the denominator, the first term should be 1. So now, my H of S has been converted to your H of Z. So in the bilinear transformation, in the very first step, you can convert your H of S into H of Z. But uh, solving that expression takes a little bit of time. So for further clarifications, uh, log into Pengelow Talk. Thank you guys. We'll see it in the next presentation.